Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what I'm going to do is go over the NS lookup command. What this command enables you to do is fetch DNS records. So if you wanted to fetch an A record, a text record, or a similar record, you can absolutely do that with this command. It's a really easy command to learn. And what I'm going to do is teach you this command, the NS lookup command in this video. Also, this video is part of my Linux Crash Course series. This series is massive. There's over 70 episodes in the playlist as of the time I'm recording this video. So there's definitely a lot of videos to go through, but thankfully you can watch these videos in pretty much any order. So if you're just starting out when it comes to learning Linux, then definitely check out the playlist for this series. And you know what? I can't wait to dive into the NSLOOKUP command, so why don't we dive in right now? We'll get into the example shortly, but what I want to do right now is give you some basic information, some of which is very important. First, I mentioned during the intro that you could use the NSLOOKUP command to query DNS information. The interesting thing about this, though, is that the dig command also does the exact same thing. So you might be wondering which one should you be using, and I figured we should talk about that before we get started. If you look up information about the NSLOOKUP command online, you might find articles telling you not to use it at all. These articles will recommend the dig command instead, going as far as to say that the NSLOOKUP command is deprecated in favor of dig. Now the thing is, while that was true at one time, that's simply not the case today. In the past, a case was being made to deprecate the NSLOOKUP command, but that decision has since been reversed. What that means to you is that neither tool is more acceptable than the other. But when it comes to which one you should be using, the reason I mention that you should learn both is because the NSLOOKUP and DIG commands behave differently depending on their environment. In some cases, you might find one more preferential than the other for looking up the exact same information depending on the situation. The reason why the behavior is different between the two of them is because the NSLOOKUP command ignores your operating system's DNS lookup libraries, while the DIG command relies on your OS DNS libraries. This also means that if you have an issue with DNS on your OS, then that might cause issues for tools like DIG. Anyway, to summarize, no, NSLOOKUP is not being deprecated, and you should learn it. Again, I'll cover the DIG command, the other command that I mentioned at some point in the future if I haven't already done so. Anyway, with all that out of the way, it's time to get started. So what I'm going to do in this section is give you some examples of the NSLOOKUP command in action. But before we could do that, we need to make sure that it's actually installed. So to do that, what we'll do is type Command-V, and then we're going to type NSLOOKUP. We just want to find out if we have this command available on our system. So I'll press enter, and you can see that I do. Now, if for some reason you don't have this tool available, then what I'll do right now is overlay some commands on the screen that you could use to get this installed. All you should have to do is use your distribution's package manager to install the appropriate package. Again, it's right here on the screen. And once you do that, you'll be good to go. Now, the most basic usage of the NSLOOKUP command goes something like this. We type NSLOOKUP, and then we give it a domain. So what I'm going to do is type learnlinux.tv. And this way, we could see the DNS records for my website. So I'll press Enter, and we can see some useful information here. Now, the first thing we see here is the IP address of the server that's providing the response. Further down, we see my domain of learnlinux.tv, and we also see the IP address for that domain. So as you can see, the NSLOOKUP command is not difficult to use at all. Its most basic usage is just this straightforward. You literally just type NSLOOKUP and then a domain, and you're good to go. Now, another thing you could do is look up subdomains as well. So what I'll do is type NSLOOKUP, and then I'll give it a subdomain. So for the subdomain, what I'll do is type community.learnlinux.tv. That's a subdomain, a subdomain of my main website. So I'll press Enter. And as you can see, we get a completely different IP address. And the reason why that's the case is because this subdomain is on a completely different server when compared to my main website. I have a VPS instance for my website and another for my community page, as you can see. So there's a different IP address. Now, I know that probably goes without saying that you could type in a subdomain, but just in case you didn't know that you could do that, well, now you do. You could type a normal domain, a subdomain, and get the appropriate response. 
Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, looking up address records isn't the only thing that you could do with the nslookup command. What I'm going to do right now is show you how to inspect other types of DNS records. So what I'll do is type nslookup, big surprise. But this time what I'm going to do is type dash query. I'm going to set that equal to mx, that's to look up the mail exchange records of a domain. And then I'll type in my website right here. And what we see is the mail exchange information for my website. For those of you that don't know, if you have a mail server, then you could set the mail server in your domain or your DNS records. So that way other servers know which mail exchanger is responsible for mail on that system. Now, obviously not every single server out there is going to deal with email at all. This only works if there actually is an email exchange that's happening on that domain. But if you wanted to inspect records that pertain to email, well, there you go. If I recall that command and change the query to txt, I could look up text records for a domain. So I'll press enter and let's see what that looks like. Now, in my case, I don't really have all that much going on. A lot of times text records can be somewhat sensitive. Usually they could be used for temporary authentication or authorization when you are attaching services to your domain. So this isn't something that everyone's going to use all the time, but it is something that you should be at least aware of especially if you are setting up something on your domain that needs verification, they'll often have you include a text record. Also, if you run an email server, then there's likely going to be required records that need to be set up as text records as well. But for the most part, you just look up the documentation for whatever it is you're setting up, and then that will tell you whether or not this is necessary. But if you wanted to look up text records with the nslookup command, well, you just saw an example of how to do that. Now, continuing, if we type nslookup, let's do another query. And this time, what I'm going to do is set the query to ns. I want to find out what the name server is for a domain. And again, I'll use my own as an example. So as you can see, the DNS name server that I'm using for my domain is actually on Linode. So if you're curious about that, well, now you know. But anyway, with this command right here, if you wanted to find out what name server is responsible for a domain, well, this is how you could find out. It's literally that simple. You type nslookup dash query equals ns, and then the domain that you're curious about. Now, another useful trick when it comes to nslookup is bypassing your local DNS and inspecting the records as it's being served from another DNS server. Now, the reason why this might be useful is because if you look up information on your local laptop, you might get some invalid information if you have local DNS, and a lot of operating systems out there are using this. So what that means is that a lot of operating systems out there have a DNS server built into the operating system, and that's what's being queried when you want to look something up. But if the entry isn't there, for example, you're looking up a website that doesn't exist locally, like learnlinux.tv, then it's going to go to the next name server outside your computer to resolve that. But when you have local DNS, sometimes that can confuse things a little bit. So what I'm going to do right now is show you how to use a specific name server for looking up information. So what we'll do is type nslookup yet again. And what I'll do is inspect my website again. But this time I'm going to give it an IP address of another DNS server. I'll just use Google's public DNS as an example here and I'll press enter. Now we really shouldn't see any different information here. Obviously the server is going to be different because I'm looking up information from a different server, but the address record is going to be the same thing. The IP address for my website is the IP address for my website, regardless of which server is serving it. But sometimes if you're having an issue with DNS record syncing and you want to find out if it's propagated, 
or if a server has a DNS entry for a particular server at all, then this is one way where you can inspect a specific server. And this is very useful if you're having problems with DNS, you can actually work around those problems and use a different lookup server for your requests. When it comes to the NS lookup command, as you can see, it's not really all that complicated. It's one of those commands that you could probably learn in an afternoon. But what I'm going to do right now is give you a really cool trick. We want to find out how long it takes for a record to be resolved. Now, the time command is not specific to NS lookup. In fact, I have a video that covers the time command. But what we're going to do is combine the time command with NS lookup. If you didn't already know the time command, if you put that in front of another command, will tell you how long that command takes to run. I'll just give it my domain right here. So as you can see, in my case, it took less than a second. Usually DNS resolution happens very quickly. You definitely want it to happen very quickly. So you should see a very low number like this. Now, if you are troubleshooting DNS caching or something like that, then this is going to be especially important. With DNS caching, what you could do is save lookups locally on your DNS server to make future requests to that same domain that much faster the next time that you go to look up information on that same domain. So if you're troubleshooting this or you want to find out just how fast your DNS server is, this is a good way to do it. But for the most part, that should be all you need to know when it comes to the NS lookup command. Again, it's not all that complicated, but it is one of those tools that you should definitely learn. And well, you just learned it. And there's our video. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Linux Crash Course series. I really appreciate you checking it out. Definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV if you haven't already done so. I release new videos every week. Anyway, thanks again for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.